So I've just taken the front cover off, which is literally just two screws there. And look at this. The earth's not even been connected. It's meant to be on there, but this whole unit has not been there. So if there was ever a problem, it would be a big problem. Right, welcome to today's job. I'm going to be replacing three sets of rad valves, so TRVs and lock shields. And we are going to be looking at the new range from Flowmaster from Screwfix. So we've got a few different colors here. So we've got the chrome ones. We have got, what color are these? Oh, I think this says it's the chrome ones. Well, we've got three different colors anyway. So there's a chrome, white, and anthracite. So we're going to be trying all three out, three sets of TRVs and lock shields to change. Luckily, we are on a combi, so I'm going to isolate the flow and returns on there, drain the pressure out of the system, set up my little workstation on each radiator, and get these rad valves changed. Okay, so pressure's been taken off the system. I've just isolated the flow, and I've isolated the filter valves on here, and the drain was a little bit tricky to get to behind there, so I've just drained it out through the filter. Let's just nip that drain off back up so now obviously there's still going to be water in the system but it's not under pressure anymore and that pretty much stopped draining and it looks like uh, we are on drops yeah it looks like it drops down there's an AAV at the back there so hopefully shouldn't be too much trouble getting these replaced well not the rads the rad valves let's get them unboxed let's get ourselves set up and let's get some rad valves replaced Okay, so these are the three sets of Flowmaster TRV and lock shows I'm going to be replacing. Now, the good thing is the TRV bodies are all chrome. It's the heads that are just the different colors, which makes it a little bit easier. So it means that you don't have to necessarily worry about changing the whole thing. You can replace the valve bodies and you can just put the new head on as well. So it will still keep in line with the color theme that you want to go for. Obviously on these ones, I haven't decided what color I'm going to put on. I'll probably do the white on this one. And then we'll use the anthracite one in the living room. And then the chrome one in the bedroom. Yeah, like I said, the good thing is we've got the TRV bodies are all chrome. So we're not going to have any issues with that. And then you can obviously, in the future, if you ever wanted to chop and change the heads, you can just get different color heads to match whatever color radiator you want to match it up to. The pressure's off. Let's get this one done first and then we'll do the lock shield as well on this side. All right, so that's three sets of TRVs and lock shields all replaced. Now I've just got to pressurize the heating system and run the heating, make sure everything's getting hot, make sure we haven't got any leaks, and then we are good to go. So we've got chrome set on this radiator. Going for the, it comes with a chrome lock shield and anthracite head on that one. And then we've gone for the white on this side as well. I've made sure all the valves are open, I'm gonna repressurize the system, and then we'll just test it all, make sure everything's working. I know it's a bit dark, but boiler's up to pressure. Heating's been running for a while. I just went down to the van to grab the same imaging camera, so just go around all of them. We've got heat coming through, that's working its way across on that one. That one is hot all the way across. And the last one, yeah, hot all the way across. As through the radiator valves changed, both TRVs and lock shoes, let's turn the heating down now because 
it's not a massive flat so it gets hot really quickly and literally i'm just going in and out of the flat just to go to my van and back i'm already sweating turn the heating down everything's been tested everything's been getting hot and we're done so catch you in the next one so this next job i've got is to replace this ariston what was that oh just hit that i've got to replace this ariston water heater and it is Kind of, in, well it's installed better than the last one that I've done, but yeah, you can see that vessel is right up against the side of it. So I'm going to be replacing the vessel and changing the orientation of it, changing the PRV. I also need to change the switch as well because that's cracked and busted. I've killed the power, a fuse box is literally just there. That's killed the power to that. I'm going to take this off first, replace the switch, sort out the vessel and then hang the new one on. Luckily, it is the same one, I've got everything here. Pipe work connection wise should be pretty much like for like same same and if I do need to make any alterations luckily it's all on push fit here I'm guessing because I'm this is a commercial property I'm guessing you can't do hot works here if I need to I've got my press gun which is another bonus of having a press gun it means you can work in situations like this where you may not have a hot works permit and you don't want to be setting off the alarm and emptying the whole building so first things first we do have a little ball of fix just there and that goes through the wall there's a kitchen on the other side of a little kitchen there i can't find if there's a stock cook anywhere else but i'm going to isolate from there and then get this disconnected get the electrical electrics disconnected get this off and then get the new one on and go from there so i've just taken the front cover off which is literally just two screws there and look at this the earth's not even been connected it's meant to be on there but this whole unit has not been nursed, so if there was ever a problem, it will be a big problem. I need to make sure that we renew that. Have I got enough? Yeah, there's enough slack on the cable for the new one as well, so that should be okay. But yeah, that is a definite boo-boo by the last person who installed this. But we'll make sure that we don't do that on the new one. And also, I just want to make sure this is a 15 litre one. Yeah, 15 litres, because uh, that's what they've asked me to bring. Let's get the electrics disconnected, get the water turned off and disconnected from here. Then I can take this off and I can work out what I need to do with the vessel. I've just drained the old one out and you can see there's a lot of rusty water that was sitting in there. Now, luckily, this one, because the pipes are coming from above, I can lift it off without any water draining out. The last one I did, because it was the 30 litre one, the tails were, or the connections were from underneath, and I completely forgot that it holds 30 litres of water. So I undid the connection, popped it off, and the water starts coming out. Quickly get, got a rubber bag and popped underneath. But this one, luckily, I was able to lift it off and then tip it upside down, empty it out of it. Because remember, that one is still going to be holding 15 litres of water. So it's a bit heavy, and I've, I'll show you the journey to get to the van to up here. Missions. But anyway, that's all off. Just want to make sure what the pipe works like behind here, so it all looks okay. I should be able to reuse these, reuse the bracket. That one's a bit bent, so I might I might actually just change it and uh, put the new bracket on rather than trying to bend that out. But first things first, what I'm going to do, whilst I've got this space here, I'm going to change that switch plate over and I'm going to figure out what I want to do with this vessel. I do want to turn it so that it's facing that way or facing down. I'll probably just have it facing that way. I think it'll be easier because right now it's on a back plate elbow. I can't just... Um, what do you call it? Mm, I mean, technically, I could maybe just bring that forward and have it there because to get the vessel against the wall, it's gonna, I'm gonna have to kick it out anyways. I might reuse that back plate elbow, but just bring it out here. The vessel will still be facing this way, but at least it will be head on over here because if I wanna try and face it that way, like I say, it's gonna, I'm gonna have to do a little kick or something and then might need something to support it. I don't know how heavy these get, not very heavy, but uh, let me see. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do the vessel, but let me change that face plate over and then I'll figure out what I'm going to do with the vessel. So I'm just setting up the new heater. That's the old one. Just putting on the dielectric connection. I thought, let me just take them off of there and see what it was like on the inside. Don't know how well it shows up on camera. Let's try and get it under some light. Uh, yeah, I think I found the reason or the failure of that one. All that lime scale is literally just clogged up the outlet. And you can see where I emptied it out as well. 
it was just full lime scale and it's probably shorted out the element inside there which has caused premature failure is that the correct word i guess i mean because I, I don't know how long it's been fitted for but yeah does my new connections and normally i would use rapid blue but i'm using loctite thread because it's plastic onto brass i know you can use rapid blue on plastic and onto brass but i thought just in case for future maintenance if i put loctite on it will come away come apart a little bit easier as well let's get some light in here i've replaced the prv and i've replaced the non-return valve and I have decided I'm going to basically just bring that out here. This is the old vessel. But just to give you an idea, if I put it about there, it's still not going to be in the way of anything. And I don't think they use this bit under here as anything else. I mean, up here, it's just like cups and stuff as well. So it might be used for a little bit of storage, but that is not going to get in the way of anything else if I'm bringing that straight in line there. And that also gives enough space to do any maintenance on the water here in the future if it requires anything and allows you to get to the switch and the PRV and everything else. And the isolation valve, you could get to anyway, but yeah, this, when it was here, it was, you saw touching right against the water heater. So I'll just bring that out there. I'm going to use the same back plate elbow, just change the olive in there and get that done. But right now I'm talking really fast because I need to go for a wee. So I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go get the stuff from downstairs to do this and then we'll get a crack and keep going. I need a wee. Okay, vessel, that's on there. Put a bit of Loctite, five, I think this is it, 577, the thread, Loctite 55, sorry. And then fiber washer in the back plate elbow as well, just for a bit of safe measure. So that's nicely on there. Change the non-return valve on there already, like I said, new PRV, new bracket. Now let's get that hung on here, get it wired up, turn the water on, and then we should be out of here. All right, water heater's hung, got loads of slack on here. Now the internal connection in here, similar, but slightly different because there's these two for the neon on there, but there's no obvious points where I need to connect it on. So I don't know if I need to connect it on to the live and neutral before I go into there. I'll have a look in the MIs. Typical man thing, we don't read the MIs, but I'll just double check whether it just wants me to tap into the live and neutral or if there's a separate connection for it. But let's now pop the water on because everything else is done let's pray we don't have any leaks so let's turn that on nice and slowly obviously the water heater has got a that's got to fill up as well 15 liters so far so good no leaks on there no leaks on the vessel side no leaks in the non-return valve None of the push fits are leaking. It's looking okay so far. Let's just let this fill up and then make sure we've got water flowing out of there. Well, we will have on the cold now anyway. But on the hot, yeah, it's going to be quite airy at the moment. I'll leave that tap open so that it allows this to purge out. And once we get a nice flow of water coming out of there, we know that this is all good. And then I can just, in the meantime, I'm going to just crack with the wiring. Well, that didn't take long. Literally, I stopped recording, sat down to have a look at the instructions, and that started flying. So, turn that off. So, that's now under pressure. It's completely full of water. I can now start doing the wiring. And yes, with the neons, it just wants me to tap into the live and neutrals on the connection of this. I'm going to get that done, obviously. Remember to earth it this time. Get all that done. Turn it on. It might start getting warm whilst I'm packing up stuff just to give it a test. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Okay, we are all wired up and I have got a Zoom call in seven minutes for another project that I'm working on. So literally wrapped this up just in time. So it's all wired in. I did find two actual terminals in there where you can plug the neon lights in. Obviously water's on. Let's now turn that on. See that's not tripped anything out, so that's all good. So it means we've got power to the big switch. Now let's just put that on. So we've got red light on there. Let's turn that on. We have red light on there. I'll put that on the E setting. Let that heat up now. Let that do its thing. I'm gonna set myself up for the Zoom call on my phone and then I'll have a little clear up. But yeah, this is pretty much the end of the job. If there's anything else to report, I'll come back to it. If not, I'll test the hot water after this call that I've got. If it's all good, pack up, get out of here, go home, done.
Hope you enjoyed this one.